I have my Nextcloud server here at home, and I have an operating system drive. It's solely dedicated to the operating system, and then I also have data drives. And uh, when I initially set it up, I thought, oh, that you know, it's just me using it, a couple other people. And so if I have to, if it... If the, if the drive dies, it'll be okay. I'll just reinstall when I get a chance, maybe that weekend. Uh, well, now I'm d using it for more things and we're getting more users. So <clears throat> I really don't want to have to wait a whole week till the weekend or reinstall late at night. You know, obviously, I've got all of my configuration files backed up. And so after the fact, I decided uh, I'm going to set this thing up for RAID 1 disk mirroring and so uh, here are my steps that I went through uh, I'm on my desktop right now and let's see let's do LS blocks you can see what I what what we're looking at here and I've this is obviously the drive that's booted this is the equivalent of booting a live USB or your own external um, SSD on the on the server on your server, and so this is the server drive. I installed Debian on this uh, just now, just for this these purposes. I love Debian because uh, I made the password Ola, and it never once was like, "Are you sure you want to do this? This password is insecure." So I really like that. It's like it, they don't care if you want to do a dumb password, you can do a dumb password. So the password is Ola. Um, and so dev SDA one has Debian on it. It was interesting. I chose in the Debian installer, this is a side note, in the Debian installer, I chose to uh, put Grub on dev SDA, but it still wouldn't boot. So I, I had to, I booted into my normal system that I'm on right now, and then I trued it into dev SDA and, you know, dev, uh, the, into the system dev SDA one, and then I installed Grub from there, and then it was able to boot. So uh, that, that should have worked where the it was able to install on that disk. All right, so everything here is using Debian 12. And so maybe different on your system. I don't know what you're running, so. All right, and also I just choose legacy boot to keep things simple, uh, not EFI boot. All right, so I've already booted in the server. I actually forgot to install. MDADM. So we're doing software RAID using the software MDADM. And uh, I uh, already installed that there. I actually forgot. And then I saw so it in, installed it. And what I decided to do on the server as well is I switched to using a swap file instead of doing a swap partition because what we're doing is we're doing a RAID array on I'm just on dev SDA one. And I'd rather have the swap file right there and you know the configuration correct in SFS tab and in the resume file instead of having uh, a swap partition. Now you can put your swap partition, I suppose, on a different disk or whatever. It's whatever you choose. I, I decided I'll just go with a swap file. This is a little guide here that uh, is pretty, plenty clear. It's not hard to create a swap file and then switch to that. So you just, I'm, I'm not going to go through these steps or spend long on this part because it's, it's pretty straightforward. So you just create the swap file and here I'm creating a swap. I'm naming it swap and I'm putting it in the root directory. Uh, sorry that this text is small. Otherwise, it's hard to uh, go through for me because it's too big for my screen. And so if you're on a phone, sorry about that. And then you set the permissions appropriately and then you set it up as a swap swap device, swap file. Uh, then, of course, you have to update FS tab and, and this resume file for init RAM FS. And then you update init RAM, init RAM FS. So here is on the server, I copy and pasted this. And so I commented out the UUID of what was the swap partition before. And I set it to this swap file named swap. And notice the front slash, meaning that that is located in the root directory. And likewise on this file, this resume file, I commented out the old UUID and then I set resume to slash swap. Nice and simple there with a slash. I didn't bother with putting in the UUID. You can also put in the UUID if you would like. Um, then you can use parted to delete the partition and uh, then turn swap back on.
All right, so this is going to result in server downtime, of course. So first off, you want to boot an external drive, as I did. And on that system, or the live USB, you need to install MDADM. And I'll just show that I have it installed here. This is my regular desktop. and Oh, oh yeah, I didn't install it yet. So there it goes. I'm installing it on my desktop computer here. I thought I'd installed it, but apparently not. That should finish off up pretty soon. All right, that's done. Move that back over. Clear screen there. All right. So on my system, I'm going to go back to LS block. I cleared that out of habit. Uh, so I've got dev SDA and dev SDB. Be really careful to make sure you select the correct drives. I actually disabled my my SATA drive in my BIOS because I don't want to be going through this and uh, do the wrong thing. So obviously we got to be careful in this process. And so I'm going to be using dev SDA and dev SDB. Nice and straightforward. SDA already has the operating system on it. And you will need to make sure that you have some, at least a couple of megabytes at the end of your operating system disk, you know, whatever's got the OS on it at this point, uh, in order to put the uh, super block on it. And you can see what the last partition is with F disk. And of course, if you ended up going with the swap file, you can just delete the swap partition, as I mentioned. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to, I want to dash before that. We need to uh, back up the partition table of our operating system. So we'll run this, SF disk, D stands for dump, SDA, and we're gonna write this file called part table or partition table. There we go. So we back that up. I don't know what's in here. Uh, yeah, just blah. That's what I use for something that's a throwaway <laughs> directory or file. Okay. So part table. So we see that, that file there that's been written. That's a backup of the partition table. And now we are going to What did I just do? I just minimized. Now we are going to write it to dev sdb. So we have a clone of the same partition table. All right, let's see what we got here. Ah, let's minimize myself. So everything looks good. And now we do ls block so we can see we got things matched up here, 222.6 gigabytes. Okay. Now let's create the, uh, let's actually create it. Let's run MDADM and create the RAID 1 array, mirroring the two drives, mirroring the operating system partition on the two drives. There's another option. Of course, you can mirror dev SDA and dev SDB, which would be the entire drive. So uh, make sure you update your drive letters and all that. You know that metadata 1.0 is necessary because it needs a, you, you need to put the super block at the end of the, of the disk. So I'm going to copy this. Show some space. So I'm going to create this device called MD0. That's going to be our RAID device. Level 1, RAID 1. Uh, how many devices are we going to do on RAID 1? Two devices. I've got SDA and SDB. Metadata 1.0. And uh, then I have Dev SDA 1, Dev SDB 1. Look over this long and hard and make sure it's correct. Um, I don't know why it says that, but yes. All right. So 
our raid array has started. That's what we should have gotten. So we can do mdadm detail dev md0 to see what's going on with that. And so we see here clean resyncing. Cat proc. And so you see a little progress bar. All right. All right, so we just check we just checked that. Now let's go ahead and install grub to both disk. No error reported. Yay. And update that. All right, now let's go ahead and chroot into the system and update everything that's necessary in the system. So uh, I think I already did this one. It's already there. Now let's try to mount it. Uh-oh, wrong FS type, bad option, bad super block. That sounds pretty scary. What have I done? Uh, so... We're going to run this, actually. Okay. I'm going to do what it tells me to do here. For it, no. All right. Now let's resize to FS. Okay. So let's try our mount again, a command again. Now it's mounted, success. And then I'm gonna show what's in there. There is my system, my server system, the root partition of my server system. Now let's finish the root process. So we mounted the root system. Now let's mount all these vir virtual directories. We're going to do a for loop that did not copy to my clipboard. And so we're going to mount all of these via for loop just to make it more uh, efficient. There we go. And now we just to root into all right. Now we're on the raid. There we go. So we've got raid one here and we've got the mount point right there so that's all squared away and set all right so let's get the block id run so let's run block block id to get the uuid of the raid device and update its fs tab I did not realize it, but it updated its FS tab automatically for me. So here I've run block ID and I've grepped uh, the first part of this UUID that belongs to MD0 and so 013. And then you see see it. And then I did cat ets, SF, ets FS tab. And you say, see the exact same UUID here below. And I necessarily commented this out because it's the exact same thing. So we're set and ready to go with ETS FS tab. And we'll run this. So that finished without any issue. <clears throat> and so now it's time to uh, log out of the root and reboot. And we can look at uh, uh, MD step. And see, it's syncing. So is when we reboot into the server, 
it'll pick right back up with its uh, syncing process of seeking the data between the two. All right, time to reboot into it. All right, so I was not able to boot into the system and that's because I needed to chroot into the system first and then install Grub. So I had installed Grub from my desktop system, not while chrooted into the system. So I ran Grub install and specified the disks. And so uh, a little tidbit, when I rebooted, instead of MD0, it shows up. It showed up as MD127, but it will show. It should show up again as MD0 after the synchronization finishes and all that. All right, so I reboot into my server with the RAID 1 array, and I waited for it to finish syncing, and then I selected the other drive on reboot in my BIOS, and of course it booted. Then I removed a drive and I, uh, you know, I, I shut down, shut it down, removed a drive, and then I selected, you know, the one disk that was connected. It booted fine, and then I and then I unplugged the other drive and plugged the other one in, and uh, selected that one. It booted as well, and uh, and then I connected both drives and booted into the server. And let's see if we see history here. And the only thing I had to do was just add one of the disks that I'd removed. So uh, it works. If you remove a drive, it, then it still boots. If you remove the other drive, then it still boots. And just one last thing here. This is on my desktop computer. And this is in a true environment. That's why it showed that history there. And uh, <clears throat> it shows up as MD127 here. But you can clearly see that on the system when it's booted, you can see I had run dev md0. And here in the cheroot, I'll just run df h so you can see that it is mounted there and everything's working great. So I hope this is helpful for you and I hope you enjoy the process.